things I want to do first was just to welcome all of you here. Um, our expectation uh, was mainly just to pull together the people that are working on climate issues, especially sea level rise. But one of the things that we've seen as a tribe is um, a lot of people doing a lot of work but pretty much independently. And the intent here was to, to look to how we can pull different levels of government together, federal, state, local, tribal, and others who are participating are scientists and people with traditional knowledge. But to start looking at gathering our information in a way that's usable and workable for all of us. But before we get into any more, what I wanted to do <coughs> was to have uh, Lynn Dobin from our uh, board of directors to open up with the word of prayer. Uh, are, are needing the same information. 
And uh, with that, uh, we have today a uh, warning right at the door from NRCS. We're going to stand up and be running. Uh, she'll be one of our witnesses uh, today and tomorrow, I believe. And uh, also, Will Stell with Noah. Will, I saw you were there. Oh, there you are. I got the light in my face. <laughs> but Will's with Noah, and he's been a good friend and, and very interested in climate work. He's helping to sponsor this and to um, help us to better understand uh, the types of information and data we're going to need so as we can share that. Um, Dennis McLaren couldn't make it today. He's out of town, but we have Peter Murchie with us. Peter's the uh, chief of sound um, liaison for looking at the tribes and everybody else in the sound working on our funding and for recovery. He also is working on the lower Columbia and the Tillamook estuaries. But with that, you know, all of these estuaries are responding pretty much the same way and keeping track and, and sorting out how to be consistent is another important task. <coughs> Peter's doing this work, this type of work, but uh, he's, he's doing well, and hopefully uh, the process we're going through with the partnership will improve, and, and we can, uh, this is one of the actions uh, today on sea level rise that, uh, that we need to understand because of the salt water intrusion on the drinking water those types of things that, that we have to face. And also, um, Glenn Robin, we just said a prayer. Uh, Glenn will be a, a witness as well. Uh, but with that, I think um, what I should do next is introduce the chairman of the Toledo Tribes, Bill Shelton. <coughs> Bill uh, agreed to come and open uh, this discussion. And uh, hopefully, he is on to the good Thank you, Charlie. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. All right. Good and proud here. I can feel some good energy here this morning. Uh, usually, I, I have a conducted survey. I'm gonna, it's a scientifically unscientific survey. Okay? So, how many of you need an alarm clock to get up in the morning? Oh, I'm liking this crowd. How many of you don't need an alarm clock? Oh, that's a good. Okay, here, here's the real question. How many of you need two alarm clocks? <laughs> <laughs> what I see here is uh, folks that don't need an alarm clock to get up in the morning. You have a purpose, you have a desire, every day is a challenge, and you're ready to step up to the plate for it. And looking around, I want to thank our elders that are here this morning. And uh, if you're not sure if you're an elder, are you getting AARP mail? <laughs> it's a request to be a member. If you are, you welcome to the elder's life. <laughs> but you know, in the uh, Indian country, we, we, we respect our elders. We always give them that other year, an extra year, to listen to them, no words, uh, with it, to share with us. Uh, any veterans here, men or women that served in the uh, country? Let, can we give our veterans a hand? When I'm thinking back about climate change and what it means, uh, talking to Will earlier, in the early 70s, there was concerns about climate change. Some of you may have been starting out in college, graduated, and, and thinking about what was going on then. There wasn't much of an audience for climate change back then. If you look at the movies or science fiction writers, they predicted climate change in their writings. Blade Runner, did anybody remember Blade Runner? And, and uh, it was down in LA and it was raining all the time. More recently, you think about Snowpiercer, did anybody see that movie? It's about a world that is just completely covered in snow and a, and a train going in circles with the civilization on the train. Uh, you know, the predicting of the eventuality of climate change. Uh, myself, I spent 25 years up in Alaska fishing, starting out in Southeast Alaska getting up as far as known, uh, all along the shoreline. And I think about the villages I've seen through my years of fishing and what climate change would mean to them. Not only us, but to the villages up there, the ones that live right on the shoreline. 
that their whole life is predicated that way. What is it going to mean to them? You know, and I think about, Terry, thank you for the good work that you and your team do in climate change. Here in the Puget Sound region or the Salish region, uh, last weekend I was up in Vancouver for a mega uh, meeting about climate change, what was going on. Over 1,500 people were attending there. It was rather, uh, it was big. And to see more and more people saying, there is climate change going on. Did I think I would see that in my lifetime? No, I really didn't. Did we have challenges going on? Sure. Do you remember uh, acid rain? That was an issue way back when, but somehow we corrected that. We made industry change a little bit more to quit doing that. How about emission control standards? Does anybody remember that battle with Detroit? And, uh, do you remember getting your uh, watching TV in the morning? LA with smog this, smog that, smog this, smog that. Nowadays, it's changed. It's not as bad. You can make a difference. If we, as individuals, we get up in the morning, we want to make a change, we can as individuals. But when we all get together in a setting like this, if you think of all the strength, the power, the knowledge, the experience that you have right here in this room, we can make a change. We can make a difference. You know, thank you. We, uh, Dennis, uh, I know he's in D.C., but thank you for being with us, all of our witnesses. Thank you for being a witness. And in reality, all of you are witnesses for today and tomorrow and what will be going on. And as you go forward in the days ahead, sharing what you've seen and heard and shared with today will be so important. Uh, Chris Winters, uh, Everett Harold, I want to give my hands up to you. Thank you for being with us. And he'll carry on. He'll share what he's seen here today, what he's heard. And, and how to share that with other folks, you know. And, and so it goes on and on, and pretty soon, China and India are gonna hear the message as well. You know, I, I think about them, and countries that finally get their chance to have their day in the sun or day in the smog, and what it means to them to increase the life for their people, and what they're willing to sacrifice to get there. Sometimes, uh, you know, when you think about it, the factories, the coal, Tulalip, as along with Swinomish, has stood up with Lummi and said no to coal, the transport of it. We also, when we think of block and shale oil, what that means, the challenges that we have uh, to uh, stand together. But also, too, knowing that, you know, our cousins out in Montana, they have to have a living, too, but there's better ways, safer ways to do things. And I think that's what's coming through to all of us. Yes, we're not gonna get through a petroleum economy. It's gonna take a little transition time, but is there a safer way to do things? Is there a better way to educate? What kind of world are we leaving for our children and grandchildren? And those that are not born yet. I didn't think I would see this change, as I mentioned earlier, what's going on. You know, in Europe, what was it? In the 13th, 14th century, they had kind of a mini ice age. The uh, river systems, there was cold, there was a lot of ice skating going on. I think that's what hockey was in. <laughs> <laughs> but we've seen those ripples. But the ripple that we're experiencing now is big, and it is here. And together, I think today, as we come together and share, we can make a change, we can make a difference, even if it's one by one that we can do it all together. So I raise my hands, and I'm going to shoot seed in the sailor's way and say thank all of you for coming together for the work that you'll be doing today and tomorrow. We'll see you in high school. We'll see Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. 
but that, it, it, we're really glad you're here to representing the people <laughs> along with the other tribal folks that are here to learn as well. Uh, you know, I think that as we, as we go through this, you know, I, I just got back from uh, Texas. I was in Austin last night, yesterday, with the President's Climate Plan. We had 22 regions uh, in the country. And we're expressing the issues that we're going through and what we're trying to accomplish. And uh, of course, uh, the theme there is uniting all of us together. Um, pretty much the same concept of what we're doing here now with federal, state, local, tribal governments to, to learn how each other's processes work, what's important to us, and, and how we think about the future. But one of the things I mentioned uh, in Texas was uh, last week or so we've been as tribes uh, looking at the return of the salmon and, and the four runs that we're, we've been seeing, uh, hatchery and wild fish coming in below escapement. But one of the tribal members came to my house, a fisherman, about a week ago. We were talking about the closing of the fisheries and a number of other things on the landscape that are being affected. And uh, I tried to walk through it so we could understand uh, and the importance of the actions that we take and, and how sometimes you have to uh, give the land a break and let it rest and, and rejuvenate. And into the discussion, he says, Terry, I understand all that, but what are we going to eat? <laughs> you know, that's, that's one thing that uh, it's hard for a lot of people to understand. That, uh, there's a percentage of our tribal folks who still feel a lot more comfortable gathering their food off the ground or, or utilizing the birds or the, or the fish or the elk uh, as a food source. But as that disappears, you know, that, that creates a, a, a huge concern to, uh, to our populations. And, and I think that you know, we're addressing you know, different concerns here today. But even with that, um, we have one of our tribal members who lives in a beach community that's uh, facing saltwater intrusion in their drinking water. And, and when I was talking to him, I asked him how the community is responding. He says, well, they're talking to attorneys. <laughs> I thought, no, we don't want to do that. This, we get the attorneys and the courts involved, and all of a sudden you get narrowing of the issues. And what we can do is options uh, that's harder to address. So uh, our discussion here today is to try to look at how, as governments, we can uh, try to get ourselves aligned in the data collection and the modeling and all of the actions that we take to, to be able to share and be constructive with our, our information. 